Hello everyone! I already made a video about the story of the Siege of Orgrimmar, but that was when it was still on the PTR and a couple of you requested if I could show you the live version. I managed to record the raid for both sides and, well, I hope you enjoy it! Just a heads up, there will be minor spoilers for the next expansion of World of Warcraft, but nothing really major. Let's begin, shall we? Garrosh has made himself a target for both the Alliance and the Horde, and Volton took the first steps against him with the Darkspear Rebellion. Now the time has come to kick Garrosh out of the Mantle of Warchief and lay siege to Orgrimmar. The story, however, does not begin in Orgrimmar, it begins in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, where Garrosh has found the heart of Yasharaj. Mm, it thirsts. Bring it to the pools. Rampant for far too long, Hell Scream. But that stops now. <laughs> Step aside, Pandaren. You confront a force beyond reckoning. Your father dabbled in powers beyond reckoning. Where is he now? <laughs> The Tauren, Trolls, and others! You are nothing like them! They are no longer part of my horde! <laughs> the world will hear of this. <coughs> they will come for you. Yes. I'm counting on it. The armies of the world will come for me. And within my fortress, they will face all the terrible creatures I have wrought. The boundless power I have mastered. And one by one, they will fall at my feet. Anyone who would rise against my new horde will be impaled upon the spires of Orgrimmar! You Pandaren tried to bury your hate and your anger, but such power cannot be contained. It must be unleashed! Time will come when you will answer for your crimes. I answer to no one! He placed the heart in the sacred waters of the Vale, causing an explosion and a gigantic scar throughout the Vale. This has corrupted the Vale, corrupted the water, and destroyed the Golden Pagoda. This act was such an act of arrogance that it gave the Shah of Pride the power needed to manifest, and the seventh Shah has arrived. We set out to clean up after Garrosh, otherwise all of Pandaria will suffer. The raid starts in the unearthed lower section of Mogshan Palace, in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, named the Pools of Power. Power. Ah, we adventure together again. Except this time, I am afraid the circumstances are much more dire. The land is scarred. The ever-blooming trees and plants wither and die. 
as the water from the pools drains away. It is these waters that kept the Vale in bloom. Their runoff into the Valley of the Four Winds created the most fertile farmland in the world. And now, the malignance of the old god has manifested itself within the waters. Such a foul, foul thing. Destroy it before it seeps deep into the soil and corrupts all of Pandaria. You have done it. The waters are pure once more. Can you feel their life-giving energies flow through you? It will take much time for the veil to heal, but you have given us hope. Can it be? Oh no. No, no, no! The Golden Lotus? But... They pledged their lives to defend this place. You... Rook knows you. Oh, yes, Rook Stone Toe, you remember me. Wh what has happened to you? Rook does know hairs cloudy. We know only despair now, fitting punishment for our failure. I see. This shore energy has trapped their spirits here to endlessly relive their failure. It feeds on their despair. Please help. This is a fate far worse than death. Please, heroes. Set their souls free. Rookstone Toe, he softfoot and some tender hearts lives were taken by the blast that scarred the veil. But the corruption has taken their souls and is now tormenting them eternally by reliving their failure. It's up to us to defeat their spirits and give them peace. Be at peace, dear friends. May your souls become one with the land you gave your life to protect. After killing Morotasha, we encounter Nuroshen, the titanic watcher who was watching the container of Yasharaj. We don't fight him directly, instead he's actually helping us. In the chamber ahead, under our peaceful land, slept the heart of an old god. Halt! Oh my, what is this? Hello, I am Lord Walker Cho. No further corruption will enter the heart chamber. Further corruption? Oh no, we are here to stop the corruption and save Pandaria. You wish to purge the corruption? Yes, please let us pass. Should you pass this door at this time, you would fail. You, all of you, are corrupted with the insidious plague known as Pride. You stand tall and proud atop your accomplishments, and this will be your downfall. Should you wish to defeat the corruption, you will first need to purify the corruption within yourselves. Speak to me again when you are prepared to face your inner demons. Try your souls to their utmost. When you are fully prepared, you may enter the chamber. Once we've cleansed ourselves from the corruption, it's time for the Shah of Pride encounter who is spawned in the chamber where we first found the container. Taranzu managed to survive his battle with Garrosh and he even survived the explosion. <coughs> They did this. 
We should never have let them in. Lord Walker Cho takes Taranzu away, and Nuroshen aids us in the battle against the Shah of Pride by granting us the power of the Titans. That is, until the Shah reaches 30% health, at that point he unleashes and instantly kills Nuroshen. Now it's up to us to face him alone, and upon his defeat, either Jaina or Lorfmar come out to take the heroes to Orgrimmar. So Hellscream's arrogance unleashed the last of the Shaw. I am not surprised. Look here. He left his weapon behind. Gore Howl. This means he's completely unhinged. News to no one, Regent Lord. King Rin's fleet is converging on Orgrimmar as we speak. Likewise. Sylvanas and I have both sent ships to support Vol'jin's revolution. I'm warning you, Lorthamar. The Alliance is besieging the city, and we will destroy Hellscreen. Your people had best stay out of our way. It is always a pleasure to see you, Lady Proudmoore. Come, heroes! Through the portal! The siege of Orgrimmar begins! Champions! Come with me. It's time to settle grievances with our war chief. When you do the raid on normal or heroic difficulty, then you won't instantly teleport to Orgrimmar. Instead, you have the option to go with the troops on the boats, and there a conversation takes place with either Jaina or Sylvanas. Hi, King. I've brought reinforcements. You heroes are a sight for sore eyes. Vol'jin's rebellion wasn't able to secure the bay. We're taking a pounding. I can open a portal to the docks. Large enough to get a strike team through. Do it. Once the area is clear, we'll make landfall. Champions, I'm counting on you. Garrosh really has gone all out this time, hasn't he? I expected more spikes, honestly. Bladefist Bay is fortified. By the sun world, we're getting slaughtered. Heroes, port over to the docks and take out their shore defenses. Put a stop to this bloodshed. I can raise your dead, Regent Lord. Your rangers can fight again. Sylvanas. You will leave our corpses alone, or I will deal with you here and now. I'm sorry to see your lack of commitment. Hmm. What of the human corpses? Well, I suppose that's between you and the Alliance, isn't it? <laughs> Rise, my angels. Let your screams fill the streets of Orgrimmar with terror. Sylvanas has the most interesting conversation since she offers to raise blood elves from the dead and Lorfamar is not having it. It's unsure if she actually has the power to do so, or if she was just bluffing, but it does suggest that Sylvanas is moving closer and closer to the point of, for example, the Lich King. If anyone remembers her conversation with Garrosh... Agatha, show the war chief. done here, Sylvanas. It goes against the laws of nature. Disgusting is the only word I have to describe it. Warchief, without these new forsaken, my people would die out. Our hold upon Gilneas and Northern Lordaeron would crumble. Have you given any thought to what this means, Sylvanas? What difference is there between you and the Lich King now? Isn't it obvious, War Chief? I serve the Horde. Watch your clever mouth, bitch! What would happen when she no longer serves the Horde? There is an obvious story to tell, but they've already said that they won't deal with Sylvanas in Warlords of Draenor. It's a shame though, I think they should have dealt with Sylvanas two expansions ago, and they're just postponing that moment, keeping her as an obvious threat to both factions. It's future talk though, like they said, they don't want to deal with Sylvanas just yet, so let's go back to the siege and talk about the most interesting lore things. We start the siege from the Bladefist Bay, where the Alliance and Horde fleets are trying to reach the land. The Darkspear Rebellion was unable to secure the bay, and Warlord Zela, 
the Dragomar and her protodrake are the next target to kill. Zela's protodrake is named Galagras, the last blood of Galagrond, and Galagrond was a huge protodrake, who we believe to be the first of all the dragons. Dawn of the Aspects revealed that this is not true, but still Galagrond was one hell of a badass. We shoot Galagras out of the sky with their own towers, and we defeat him. Warlord Zela herself did survive the siege, and she will be part of Warlords of Drenor. Finally, I will never get all of this dust out of my robes. Oh, you're still here? I had kind of hoped you had perished. You would make a very attractive corpse. I will take that as a compliment. We'll hold the docks for now and marshal the forces. Vol'jin should await you at the gates of Orgrimmar. <laughs> if he's not dead. With the base secure, we move on to the gates where the Iron Juggernaut awaits. Casualties are too heavy. Don't be foolish, Vol'jin! You have no siege weapons left! You cannot win this battle! It no other way, man. We've got to stop Garrosh here and now! Else we'll be running the risk of our lives. Take Orgrimmar today! Anudora! What? Corcoran! To the gates! Now! Are they my sisters? For Kalimdor! Taranda? Don't think we're here to save you, troll. We're here for Kalimdor! Get forces inside the gates, while we distract the enemy! After the Night Elves break down the gates, we find out exactly how far Garrosh and his horde have taken this. Survivors from Veramor, who were sent away in boats, are found caged, used for target practice or even forced to fight each other. Trolls also used for target practice, goblins who were forced to dance, and some orcs who did not agree with Garrosh were forced to hide. G Firepaw, Pandaren representative for the horde, has been beaten nearly unconscious as they're trying to get information out of him about the Pandaren artifacts. Oh, gee, I am so sorry. We can be together now. Please, let us just go back to the turtle. Please do not die. I am getting him out of here. Gammon, once the punching bag of the Horde, stood up against the Corcoran, but in the end even he was tied down to a tree. This ends here. I, Gammon, will save us. The warlock trainers of the Horde powers Garrosh and his troops despise, nearly all of them killed and hang up as a display as a warning to anyone who dares to dabble with fell magic. The war chief ignored my counsel. I discovered he was building a compound beneath the caverns of Ragefire. Thrall and Sourfang have already gone down below. Go with caution. Hellscream has been assembling an arsenal down there. Goblin mercenaries, Pandaren artifacts, and some sort of darkness I can feel in my very soul. 
These two dark shamans are called Harom and Kardis Dreamseeker, who both have been shaman trainers for a very long time. The difference between normal shamans and dark shamans is that shamans ask the elements for their aid. Dark shamanism forces the elements into servitude, twisting them into burned out ash, corrupted waters, or even toxic air. The true horde takes what it wants. I can hear them no longer. The elements. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> After taking care of the dark shamans, you have the option of freeing Gammon. And if you do, he will aid you in the next battle. A fight against an orc who remained loyal to his war chief despite everything. I am I will die on with honor in battle for the horde! I regret what I must do. General Nasgrim will hold the line for his war chief until his dying breath. I'm not sure if Gammon survived the siege, I couldn't find an official ruling on it, but I would imagine that he did. If you do the achievements, Gammon will survive, and usually when they give an option like that, lore-wise it means that the character survived. I die with honor. After Nasgrim, we kill a whole bunch of Korkron and even Melkorok. Melkorok was Garrosh Hellscream's bodyguard and chief advisor, and for his loyalty, he has been rewarded with a portion of the power from the heart of Yasharaj. It's interesting to note that it looks like he cut off his own arm and replaced it with a weapon. This is similar to what the orcs from the Shattered Hand Clan did, but that's besides the point. To die for the war chief. Is an honor. After his fight, we reach the Korkron barracks where we open the gates for the rest of the troops to come in. Our lines are holding, but Vol'jin's rebels are taking a beating. The Korkron are making a push for this compound. They're not giving up. We'll post up here with some troops, scout on ahead, and see if you can flush Garrosh out of hiding. Garrosh be concealed in a whole hidden base. Where did his lust for power take him? We will soon find out. He is cornered like a rat in one of these corridors. What should we do next? Bane, you and your warriors hold this junction. These heroes should forge ahead and flush the war chief out of hiding. What about you? People be dying up above. The city is in chaos. I'm gonna finish it. Stop the bloodshed. I'll come back for ya. Mm, very well. It's gonna be fine, Bane. We gonna find Thor. Gonna kill the war chief. Gonna avenge your father. Earth Mother protect you, Vol'jin. <laughs> Dark Spear never die. If you're Horde, you'll have to clear the rest of the way yourself. For the Alliance, the gnomes come to the rescue. Deploy the gear! Establish a perimeter! We've just about secured the surface. Looks like the real fight's going to be down here. Don't worry, we've got your back. Forge ahead, brave heroes! The Spoils of Pandaria is the next encounter in the siege, where you destroy the spoils that Garrosh found in Pandaria. It's not a really interesting fight lore-wise, but the one after that, the one against Tok the Bloodthirsty, 
is rather interesting. Tok is a pet brought back to Orgrimmar from Pandaria and you can open three cages during this fight and each cage holds a different prisoner. You have water speaker Gorai who was part of a quest line in Kunlai Summit. Akolik, a Saurok who we've seen before on the Isle of Thunder. And you have Warmaster Montak which I don't remember seeing before but I might have missed it. I personally thought adding NPCs that we've seen before, that we've interacted with, that we've quested with, I thought it was a really nice touch. Next up is Siegecrafter Blackfuse where either the goblins of the dwarves pop up and try to help out. So Garrosh thinks he can cheat old Grizzle out of a payday, huh? Oh, hey now, what do we have here? Oh, look, you're the one that smashed up my juggernaut. Let's see how you like the newest addition to the War Chief's arsenal, the Iron Star. Go get it, boys. That contraption's got nothing on real goblin engineering. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe it does. I better, um, go check on the others. Oh, that was a fun ride. Heroes, I salute you. There's something right foul in these chambers below the city. Oh, look. You're the one that smashed up my juggernaut. Let's see how you like the newest addition to the War Chief's arsenal, the Iron Star! Oof, that looks dangerous. Get in there, boys, and show him what we're made of. <laughs> All right. Deadly machine that is. Best watch your step down here, heroes. Agron, show him who's boss. Blackfuse himself doesn't have much lore behind him. A goblin with the combination of engineering prowess, professionalism and ruthlessness to satisfy Garrosh in his search for the engineer of the true horde. What is interesting is that Garrosh will take his blueprints with him in Warlords of Draenor and the Iron Horde will have access to the technology that we've seen in the siege. So for example these Iron Star weapons or anything that Blackfuse could craft like these gigantic uh, cannons on the back of the Grom. Those were his, his blueprints and Garrosh has taken them with him. Or at least he's going to. Don't think you've won. My legacy <coughs> will live on. Anyways, that's future expansion talk. And next we'll make our way to the Paragons of the Kluxi. And if you're Alliance, you'll have to clear the tunnel yourself. For the Horde, Thrall and Saurfang already did most of the work. Ah, more of Vulgen's revolutionaries. <coughs> you've made it. Have you found Thrall? <laughs> I am badly hurt. He insisted on going ahead alone. Tell me, how goes the battle up above? What of Nazgrim? Speak to me. Ah, oh, Nazgrim. A great leader and a fine warrior. He valued his oath to the war chief more than his life. I tried to tell him. To tell him that Hellscream betrayed us. Cast aside a war chief's responsibility to his own people. But Nazgrim, too loyal, too proud. Damn Hellscream. His ambition tore our horde apart. Go on, find Thrall. Finish this. I will live. With the path cleared, it's time to face the Paragons of the Kluxi. These are the same guys that we released from the Ember in the Dreadwasters, and the same guys who had some trouble with their queen. They did warn us though, so it shouldn't be a surprise to see them at Yashara's side. 
I tell you now, because you have earned this warning. If the old ones ever return, we mounted will once again stand by their side. The wisest among you will do the same. And now, with the heart in Garrosh's possession, the Paragons stand at his side. They try to defend the heart from the children of the Titans, but ultimately they fail. Well fought, Wakener. We will meet again. Which brings us to the final encounter, Garrosh Hellscream himself. It is not too late, Garrosh. Lay down the mantle of Warchief. We can end this here. Now, with no more bloodshed. <gasps> Do you remember nothing of honor, of glory on a battlefield? You who would parley with the humans, who allowed warlocks to practice their dark magics right under our feet. You are weak. We are the Orcish Horde, the true Horde. We die, bloody and thrashing, on the field of battle, like true Orcs should. You are an Orc no longer, and speak for none but yourself. You betrayed our people to forge your fragile alliances, and I will take great pleasure in tearing them apart. Then you have forced my hand. I will correct the mistake I made long ago. Spirits of the wind, the earth, the water, hear my call. Come to my aid. <laughs> Fool, my dark shaman have twisted and tortured the elements for miles around. They cannot hear you now. Once again, you prove too weak and powerless to do anything. Never powerless, Garrosh. And never alone. So, you wish to face off against a real Orc war chief. So be it. Garrosh has abandoned Gorhau and now relies on the strength from the heart of Yasharaj. He occasionally drags you into the realm of Yasharaj where the old god himself will whisper in your ears. See the visions of fear, despair and doubt as I have. I can taste the essence of your soul. When you do the encounter on heroic mode, then you will get an extra phase which comes with a vision. The vision Garrosh has seen for the world. His world for his horde. Behold! My glorious destiny! After a long battle, Warchief Garrosh is finally defeated. Time for the Alliance and Hordes to do what must be done. You disappoint me, Garrosh. You are not worthy of your father's legacy. His punishment is not for you alone to decide. I won't let you take him. We have all suffered from his atrocities. My people 
more than any other. Let him stand trial in Pandaria. There, we will mete out justice for all. The Horde needs its true war chief. Now, more than ever. Yes. But it was you that held the Horde together during this madness. It was you that protected our honor. From this day forward, Vol'jin, if you lead, I will follow. I am not worthy. But I will give my all for the whole. Look at them. Already they plot against us. Seize this moment, Varian. Dismantle the Horde. Guardsmen! Father, what are you doing? What a king must do. I will speak to your war chief. Horde has committed heinous crimes, Vol'jin. But some among you fought against Garrosh's tyranny. For that, I am willing to end this bloodshed. But know this. If your Horde fails to uphold honor as Garrosh did, we will end you. It's been decided that Garrosh will be put on trial in Pandaria. Varian leaves Orgrimmar to the Horde, despite Jaina's wishes, and the Horde has a new war chief, namely Vol'jin. From this cinematic, I assumed that Thrall would be the new racial leader for the Orcs, but Chris Madsen said that if it was up to a vote, he would place either Eitrick or Saurfang in that position. At the end of the siege, you get the chance to talk to the leaders of either the Horde or the Alliance. Jaina says that not dismantling the Horde is a huge mistake, which implies that she still holds a grudge against all the Horde and not just Garrosh anymore. Lorfamar says that he finds politics exhausting and he's confident that Vol'jin will take us where we need to go, assuming he can hold his Horde together as he glances over to Sylvanas. Another hint that Sylvanas is a problem, but like I said, they won't be dealing with it anytime soon. Varian explains why he leaves Ogramar and that it's time to work towards peace. He wants to station a garrison near Feramor. He wants to investigate cleansing the plague from Gilnean lands, and he wants to contain Sylvanas. From here on forwards, the Alliance will be proactive. Never again can there be another the likes of Hellscream. I sure hope so. I hope that they will remember the end of the siege for the story and that we won't end up in another war against the Horde. If they do, and it's highly likely that they will at some point, well, they will make this decision pretty idiotic and it would make Jaina write about the Horde. We can only wait and see where the story might lead us and Warlords of Draenor will probably not deal with any of this, so for the next expansion, we're definitely good. With Hellscream defeated and the old god Yasharaj completely absorbed by Garrosh, it's time to bring the story of Pandaria to an end. Lord Walker Cho invites us to come with him to the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. Dear Emperor, it is done. The darkness that you once struggled against has been purged from Pandaria forever. But the cost, such a terrible cost. Do not despair the damage that was done here. You triumphed over the darkness I had locked away. You have shown Pandaria the power of a true hero. A 
But the question still remains, why do we fight? I trust you have learned to fight out of fear or anger is to fight a war that never ends. Face your fears, calm your hatreds. Find peace within yourself so that you may share it with the world around you. These are the greatest treasures in life. Truly they are worth fighting for. Thank you, Emperor. Thank you. The land of Pandaria will heal and the destruction caused by Garrosh and by extension us will all be but a memory. Garrosh is placed in jail to await his trial, which leads the story into the next novel and the next expansion. That however is a story for the future. For now, thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you like my videos and until next time guys. See ya!